Hi, and welcome to the channel. I am your host, Philip. You clicked this link because you have questions about installation of exterior trim, so let's dive in on the subject. Recently, a friend of mine who does construction projects for a living posted on social media some pictures of him replacing the trim on a chimney. His pictures showed how the wood has rotted away, and once he touched the board, it completely fell apart under his fingers. Such issues usually happen to properties that are owned by the owner for a long time. Every time a house gets sold, it goes through the inspection, and things like this are corrected prior to the sale. But if no inspection is done for decades, things can slip by. So if you're like me, who has had the same house for a very long time, this video is made for you in mind. Get comfortable and enjoy. By the way, if you find this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not yet a subscriber, hit the subscribe button below before you forget. So back to the trim. Seeing my friend's post prompted me to take a look at the trim around my house that was built about 15 years ago. And to my horror, I discovered that one of the windows, which is the largest one and is the only one without an overhang, the top board has turned it exactly into that mush. It completely rotted away. The reason for it is visible on the side. Whoever painted the trim decided to save time and did not fully seal this piece of wood, which then over the course of 15 years almost completely disintegrated. If any of the seals lose their integrity, damage starts expanding throughout the method of least resistance. Looking at the vertical connecting piece on the right side of the window, you can see that the rot also expanded into it. Check all of the boards and figure out which ones need to be changed out and which ones need to be reused. Even though the other vertical side and the bottom piece are still okay, I decided to upgrade them. I will install the new top and vertical ends and will resurface and repaint the bottom piece. The two center window boards are still good and I will just reseal and repaint them to match. If you make any holes during your inspection like I did, make sure to patch them up ASAP. Since I wasn't able to finish the project on the same day, I placed a bit of silicone in a hole to protect the house until I can get to it. So for this project you will need a hammer, nail puller, nails, pry bar, putty knife, a razor, a saw, sealant, trim lumber in your specific size, and paint. So now is the time to get fresh trim ready, cut and painted before ripping off any of the existing trim. First you want to measure the trim over your window. Then you need to purchase that size or longer from your local lumber store. Boards come in different sizes, so make sure to pick the ones closest to your dimensions. I was able to find them in various sizes at Home Depot, ranging from 8 to 12 feet. In my case I'm using pine, and my longboard is just over 10 feet, so I had to get a 12 foot piece of trim. Once you get the trim lumber, you want to cut it to size and paint it. I'm using my handheld DeWalt saw, but you can use any kind of saw on it. Even a hand saw will work very fast. If you want angle cuts though, then it can get a little more complicated. If you don't know how to do it, do a search in YouTube for how to cut wood corners. And there are plenty of great resources. This is also your chance to modify the design of your trim if you want. See if you can spot the difference in mine. For paint, you want to use something durable. The higher the gloss, the stronger the finish will be. For fastest results, get paint and primer in one. Make sure to paint every piece of trim well on all six sides, especially concentrating on the end grain pieces. This is where the water usually enters before it starts its destructive ways. When you remove the old trim, the key is not to damage the wall. Carefully pry it off with a pry bar. If you have never seen your window exposed, don't be surprised if you encounter large holes that the builder did not seal off completely. The old trim can be in various stages of decay according to how well it was prepared prior to installation. I was able to save the bottom piece, which saved me another trip to Home Depot. So use a sander or sandpaper to resurface the piece by removing as much of the original paint as you can. You want to get to the fresh wood underneath the paint and remove possible indications of rot developing. Make sure to eliminate all of these issues prior to painting and sealing them under the paint. Don't just paint over an installed old piece of trim unless you know its condition on all six sides. Once the trim is painted, now you need to nail it in place and apply sealant around it. 
In my case, I'm using galvanized spiral decking nails, especially after seeing how rusted the original regular nails that the builder used became. For sealant, I used 100% white silicone, which turns fully waterproof within 30 minutes. To help with making the seal look nicer, I like to use this spreader tool. On one side, it is a cap for the sealant tube, and on the other end, it is a shaping tool. Apply a thin and consistent bead of sealant, and then use the shaping tool to clean up the application, while at the same time pushing the silicone inside the opening. You want to make it as watertight as possible. Since you're applying sealant, this is also a good time to take a look at the current state of the seals on your window frame. If you see any gaps, shrinkage or cracks, you can cut it out with a blade and scrape away with a putty knife prior to resealing it as part of your trim process. This way the color of the sealant will be also the same throughout your whole window. I applied additional sealant to the wall where the back of the trim will touch and to the parts that will touch the other trim pieces. After the nails are in and the sealant is fully applied to all of the openings and crevices, touch up the trim and nails with paint to cover any blemishes that were created during the installation. With some sealants, you might have to wait a while for it to fully cure before you can paint it. By the way, if you fall into this group of long-term real estate owners and now you have some silicone left, you might want to take a look at the seals around all of your windows and garages. Things deteriorate over time, so any preventative maintenance helps. And this is the whole process in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and most importantly, if you had doubts about your ability to do it yourself without hiring outside help, now you can see how easy it is. So, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching, see you next time, and I'm out of here.